from where you sit as the team that has been put together by your party, what do you say about Ghana's management of COVID-19 pandemic so far? Thank you very much, and I'm happy to be here this morning to discuss this topical issue of how we are managing COVID-19 in Ghana. I would like to say up front that we can do better. The management of this pandemic in Ghana can be structured better, can be managed better, can be uh, it, it trans can transmit information to the population better and can mobilize the citizens to become more conscious and be more receptive to some of the directives that the leadership has put in place. I'm saying this because since the first two cases on the 12th of March, there has been a lot of actions and directives from government. First of all, the closure of the border was delayed, which opened up space for a lot more people who had been infected from other jurisdictions to come into Ghana. Obviously, we all are aware about the processes that took place, the quarantines, the testing, and uh, subsequently the the, the contact tracing. At that point, all managers of crisis of this nature will have begun to project the manner in which these cases will increase. We didn't see any of those projections. But some experts at that, even at that point, could tell us that we will be having very sharp increases if the right measures were not taken. Indeed, government decided after two weeks to put in place a lockdown. Lockdown accompanied with certain measures, i.e. Uh, restrictions on gathering, not more than 25. We also had the protocols of washing of hands, no touching of face. Uh, churches were, were asked to suspend their activities. We went through, indeed, Easter without the Christian population celebrating the death and resurrection of Christ. Today, we have the Muslims going through their Islamic uh, fasting and processes, and we also have their day of celebration after the fasting, we are still under a process of managing this COVID-19. As we speak, from the 12th of March to today, you could see the, the rate of increase of the numbers as we go along. Initially, the epicenter was only restricted to Accra and Kumasi and Tema and Kaswa Envaro. Today, it has gone up to the northern sector of this country, it's gone to the Volta region, to the Oti region, and those numbers are signif having significant increases. This is because something is not going right. And the <clears throat> message that is coming out from leadership is that there is full control on the cases in Ghana. This, I think, is not entirely correct. And there are several concerns also about the, the way the numbers are being churned out to the population. Most people who are critical observers of this process have doubts on the cases that are being announced. Citizens must have trust in the managers of this pandemic. That is the number one criteria for success in any crisis condition. Indeed, I've had time to 
comment and made my, my point very clear that we need to elevate this, the management of this process from a task force committee approach to a crisis management approach with a clear command structure as in other jurisdictions. This crisis is going to be with us for the long haul. Indeed, the last broadcast of the president, he was noted for the first time to have described the situation as a warlike situation. A warlike situation needs a warlike response. There is no two ways about it. Granted that we don't have the military in any battle with anybody, but the pandemic, if you consider it as an enemy force, you need to design a structure, a strategy. You need to uh, design a plan. You need to put to together capacities. You need to put, identify your frontline uh, uh, workers. You need to define all these process, all these categories of persons, institutions, and facilities that will confront the pandemic. As we speak today, if you ask where is the plan? Where is the strategy for, for executing this uh, fight against COVID-19? We are yet to see any document. There cannot be any consistent, strategic, tactical approach to address this if you do not have a plan or a strategy. Secondly, on this one, on the management of the, of the cases. We also need to have a clear definition of the crisis management team. It cannot be a fluid team. People can go in and out, but we need to have a clear structure. We need to know who is in charge. That when we hear that voice, either early in the morning or early in the evening, we know we are getting the correct accurate figures, we know we are getting the correct analysis of the data, we know we are getting the correct impact on, the, on COVID-19, on our people, the economy, social life, and how it's disrupting our cultural settings. We need to know the response approach. These are not normal times, and therefore we cannot have normal responses. Indeed, any approach, in fact, I've just touched my face mask, which is not proper. <laughs> Indeed, any approach in addressing the economy cannot be addressed as though we are in normal times. I've had time to comment on how we need to have a targeted, a critical economic response approach to abnormal situation in this our country. We cannot have a copycat approach to economic recovery or economic development, as the case may be, or the management of some financial figures as a way of responding to this crisis. We need to have a transparent, accurate data and all, and all the inflows in terms of resources coming into this country to respond to the crisis, we need to have some transparency in how this is managed. This is a crisis management mm. situation. Mm. We cannot go on without transparency, timely, accurate information to the is citizens it, to it, make sure that the citizens it, 